Across the heartland, Americans are inspired to stand up to the liars. We're challenging the cheats. We're fighting the frauds because we've got a powerful force on the side of truth. You are to respond, yes, ma'am. We've got Judy Justice. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Do we understand each other? Yes, sir. I'm not finished with my... Okay. <laughs> Get Judy Justice. <laughs> Judge Judy, weekdays at 4, followed by First at 5. You're watching the news leader, ABC7, WCSR-TV, Indianapolis. I got something to say, and everybody needs to hear it. I'm Curtis Payne. I don't let nobody push me around. I'm Curtis Payne. Curtis. Curtis Payne. I'm Curtis Payne. I don't let nobody push me around. I'm Curtis Payne. Curtis Payne. Damn. I fight for what I believe in. It's music to our ears. Back-to-back -back episodes of House of Pain, tomorrow at 8 on TBS. Very funny. Now, in high definition, this is the ABC 7 News Nightcast. A major break in a hit and run that killed a boy in Owen County. Police say they have found the car. 12-year-old William Bottoms was killed Saturday night while, working, while walking alongside State Road 42, leaving a dance. Officers are still talking with people, but haven't made, arrested anyone in the hit and run. Metro Police did make an arrest in a, th in a deadly shooting. 25-year-old Tia Washam, 21-year-old Jeremy Seabury, and 23-year-old Tymon Brown are now in police custody. Police say they and, seven, and a 17-year-old girl tried to rob a liquor store clerk by luring him in front of a Midas shop near 36 and Lafayette Road. Shots were fired and the 17-year-old was shot in the neck and killed. ABC7 is on your side with a warning about breast implants from the FDA. The warning involves both silicone and saline. The government says that they may be linked to a rare form of lymphoma, a cancer of the immune system. The disease, the disease can develop over a few years or even decades after the implants are put in. Symptoms can include swelling, pain, lumps, or asymmetry of the breast. Now the, now the FDA says women with no symptoms should just continue their regular medical checkups, but they are not recommending removal. Two years ago, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels signed a bill capping property taxes, causing government-funded organizations like schools to fall short in their annual budgets. Under, any, under Indiana law, schools must now essentially ask taxpayers if they can have their taxes raised and through a referendum. Perry Township on Indianapolis' south side is just one of the many schools across the state asking for billions of dollars. You wanted to know what schools are really asking, so ABC7 went to investigate with video that you'll only see on Saturday. After the governor signs legislation limiting school funding, school districts all across the state are having to reevaluate how they educate their students. Here in Perry Township, the administration faces a $10 million deficit for 2011. That's on top of a $7 million cut last year. The school board plans to ask taxpayers for two referendums. Referendum 1 would be a budget referendum, allowing schools like the two sixth grade academies and two Edison schools to stay open as normal, saving teacher jobs, keeping media specialists at both high schools, and keeping band students from having to pay more money than they do now. What Referendum 1 won't do is fix facility issues, like the leaking pool, heating and air conditioning, security and technology. That's all in Referendum 2. I'm under the pool in two inches of water, a room that desperately needs financial attention. But get this, it's just one issue from a book of problems. In a phone interview, Superintendent Thomas Little told me that without the facilities referendum passing, the pool would close, swimming classes would be canceled, and the swim team would be no more. And what about Southport's pool? Dr. Little says not so fast because their pool is in equally poor condition. As for the broken technology, faulty lights, and crippled heating and air conditioning systems, without fundraisers or some outside funding, this building would have some very serious issues in the next few years. It's those issues that not only could change the way you learn, but where you learn. The school board has come up with what is being called a last resort option, merging and redistricting the Southport and Perry Meridian sides of Perry Township. 
But because the referendum hasn't been voted on yet, there has yet to be any official plans. But if taxpayers decide not to give Perry Township an extra $15 a month, it wouldn't be long after polls close that you'd hear talks of layoffs, pay to play sports, and cut classes. Reporting at Perry Meridian High School, I'm Cameron Riddle. Back to you. So ahead, all big cities have rats running through the downtown, including this one, I've seen them. But how many of you can say you've had one of the little critters crawling on you in your sleep? One New York subway rider can. We'll give you the story behind that coming up. But first, the two and a half men star Charlie Sheen is back in the hospital. The latest on the notorious bad boy's condition. The news on ABC7 is brought to you by Canada. Ixus. Get creative with your world. Canon, delighting you always. Closed captioning, now on ABC7. Huh, just taking a pet pals break. <laughs> <laughs> I like that segment too. Dogs are so cute. <laughs> are you listening to me? I'm listening to us. I'm listening to the Paul and Tom show on Stitcher Radio with my droid. I download all the episodes from iTunes and listen on my iPhone. It's the best podcast I've ever listened to. <laughs> it would be funny if you weren't. <laughs> Visit paulandtomshow.com. And now, the number one show in late night. Dave, Conan, no. Nightline is tops. Nightline. Wow. That tonight's gonna be a good night. That ABC's Nightline. The only thing different in night. late night. Breaking news at this hour, we have just learned that Indiana Pacers head coach Jim O'Brien has been fired and effective immediately. The word coming from Larry Bird that the current assistant head coach, that the current assistant coach Frank Vogel will serve as interim coach until a new coach can be found. Stay with ABC7 News and the IndyChannel.com for the latest developments on this one. New at 11, actor Charlie Sheen is recovering in the hospital tonight. Someone called 911 from the actor's home this morning. Sheen was reportedly suffering from severe abd abdominal pain. The situation was enough for Sheen's parents and his ex-wife Denise Richards to rush him to the hospital. TMZ reports that a source tells them that Sheen was reportedly doing cocaine in the house before in the hours before they called 911. His rep says it is not an overdose, but he has had hiatal hernia problems he has supposedly had for the past few years. Finally tonight, we all know the Big Apple is a dirty city filled with the unknown and unthinkable. But it was a too close for comfort call on a New York City subway car that'll make you cringe. I let my friends at ABC World News Now in New York, Vanita Nair and Rob Nelson, tell you the story. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this brave rat. It's gross. Uh, a commuter took this video. You see the rat running around inside a subway car. Oh. Then, while one guy is sleeping, it runs right up his leg. Take a look at that thing. Oh my, oh. get this. Yeah, I think the most shocking thing is if the guy, it only briefly woke him up, and then he just goes right back to sleep, and the rowdy rat continues running around, oh, as you can imagine. Oh, man. <laughs> this is totally viral. This video is everywhere. Yeah, this bizarre video, as you heard, was shot by a fellow rider who didn't even bother to wake up the little critter's victim. The video has gone viral now on YouTube with hundreds of thousands of people watching it over and over again. Well, that is going to do it for the Nightcast tonight. I'm Cameron Riddle. Thanks for making ABC7 News your choice for news. Our next newscast begins tomorrow morning at 4.30 with ABC7 News this morning. Stay tuned. Nightline is coming up next.
drove these kids to live in a pickup truck or on a stranger's couch or even in a tree. Friday, Chris Cuomo investigates love, loss, and lives on the edge. I didn't know exactly what's going on. I knew it wasn't good. On 2020, Friday at 10, 9 central on ABC.